Hey everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's video. We did come to the conclusion that the book The Grumpy Pirate won yesterday, but um, today we have two amazing books, The Boy Who Cried Bookfoot and The Invisible Boy, so I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Roar! If you guys didn't know, I'm Bigfoot's son, Tommy, and Adelise will be telling you guys a little story about him and a little boy named Ben. Hi, my name's Adalis Brito, and I'm going to be reading The Boy Who Cried Bigfoot by Scott Magoon. The Boy Who Cried Bigfoot. The Boy Who Cried Bigfoot by Scott Magoon. This is the story of my friend Ben and how we first met. This is Ben. Ding, ding. Ben likes to tell stories. Look, everyone is Bigfoot. He likes to tell stories. When, when? Well, I don't see him a lot. Bigfoot. All that practice made him a pretty good storyteller. And he looked like this, and he sounded like this. Rawr. He even used props. What a tenacious little fella he was. People came from all over town to see Bigfoot. They waited and they waited, but the creature never appeared. He walked right through here, see? After many hours with no sightings, everyone suspected that Ben had made it all up. Bigfoot isn't real. He is real. His feet were this big. He was right here. I saw him. I don't remember crossing paths with you, Littlefoot, I said. I didn't normally talk to Littlefoot, but there was something about this Ben I liked. He was a determined fellow. I also liked his bike. I asked, mind if I take it for a ride? But the Bigfoot? Bigfoot, Bigfoot, Bigfoot is stealing my bike. Coming with? And my dog. Alas, no one believed Ben anymore. No one came running. It seems Ben found being alone to be a little scary. Ding, ding. Fortunately for Ben, he wasn't alone for too long. Ben, where are you? Come home. It's time for dinner. And it was time for me to go home too. I'm sorry I created such a ruckus, Ben said. But I really did see him, Mom. Oh, Ben, she said. Let's go home. So Ben and his family went home and had a hot meal. I didn't know what a hot meal is, but I do know that Ben learned the importance of always telling the truth. And he wanted everyone to know he really had seen me. So the next morning, he set out to prove it. What a tenacious fellow he is. The end. Hey guys, I'm the Invisible Boy's little brother. Emily Ford will be presenting to you guys my older brother's story. Hi, my name is Emily Ford, and today I will be reading The Invisible Boy by Trudy Ludwig, illustrated by Patrice Barton. Can you see Brian, the Invisible Boy? Even Miss Carlotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. Nathan has problems with what Miss Carlotti calls volume control. He uses his outside voice inside too much. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian doesn't. When the bell rings for recess, Mika and JT take turns choosing kids for the kickball teams. The best players get picked first, then the best friends of the best players than the friends of the best friends. Only Brian is left, still waiting and hoping. JT glances in Brian's direction, just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he tells the others. Let's play ball. In the cafeteria, Madison and our friends talk about her birthday party. The rope swing over the pool was awesome, says JT. Yeah, so was the water slide, adds Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, says Madison. Everyone did except Brian. He wasn't invited. 
At choosing time, when, while the other kids play board games and read, Brian sits at his table, doing what he loves to do best. He draws fire-breathing dragons scaling tall buildings. Thank you for toasting my marshmallow. Space aliens locked in intergalactic battles. I got you now. Crackers? <laughs> Arr, yay. Greedy pirates digging for treasure. Hi. Hi, friend. Have a cookie. And superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. On Monday morning, Miss Carlotti introduces Justin, a new student, to the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids sneak looks at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. They haven't quite made up their minds yet. At lunch, Madison and JT watch Justin eat with chopsticks. What's that? asks Madison as she points at Justin's food. It's bulgogi. Bul what? Bulgogi. It's a Korean barbecued beef. My grandma made it for me. It's really good. Want to try some? There's no way I eat booger ghee. The, ch the kids laugh at him. All of that is, all that is, except Brian. He sits there wondering which is worse, being laughed at or feeling invisible. The next day, when Justin goes to his cubby to put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. Justin, I thought the bulgogi looked good. Brian, yum. At morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing away. You're Brian, right? Yeah, thanks for the note. Hey Justin, Emilio calls out from Tether Ball Court. You're up next. Sorry, I gotta go, says Justin. By the way, that's a really cool drawing, he adds before taking off. But back in class, Miss Carlotti asks the kids to team up with in twos of, or threes for a special project. The kids scurry around the room to pair off. Brian heads towards Justin. I'm already with Justin, says Emilio. Find someone else. Brian looks at the floor, wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Miss Carlotti said we could have up to three people in our group. We're only two. Come on, Emilio, let him work with us. Okay, I guess. Miss Carlotti gives directions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in that photograph. Use your imagination and have fun. Whoa, cool, says Emilio. What, what kind of people do you think would live in a house like that? I don't know, but I bet Brian draw, draw, could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pen. The crooked, the crook story we made up on spot. It's lunchtime again. Brian's least favorite part of the day. Another 20 long minutes, long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Brian, he hears someone shout. Hey, Brian, over here. Brian turns and sees Justin waving him over. Emilio nods at Brian as he makes room for, for him at the table. Cookie? Thanks. Just maybe, just maybe. Brian's not so invisible after all. The end.